Today we're talking about everything OTF. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. In the previous knife video I said get this to 500 likes and I will make a video on this knife right here which I gave you a preview of in that old video. You guys got to 500 and today we are going to be taking a look at this guy. Another new one coming from Benchmade known as the Claymore OTF. Now there's a lot of cool things about this knife, but it's not going to take me that long to give you all of my impressions of this thing. So I figured instead of just talking about this new OTF, I wanted to grab all of the OTF knives in my collection, which is honestly not that many. I would say that any kind of switchblade OTF that I have right here, this is probably like I would say it's a minority of my entire collection, but we're gonna use all of these as a comparison to this new Claymore, and this will give you guys a little bit of a glimpse into my current knife collection. So the original Claymore knife has been in the Benchmade collection for a little while now, but this time they have turned it into an OTF or an out the front knife. This new variant has an open length of 8.9 inches, a blade length of 3.89 inches, a closed length of just over five inches, and a blade thickness of 0.116, so pretty slim blade, and then a handle thickness of 0.521 inches. There are a few different colorways that this blade is being offered in, and of course I opted for the all black version. So when it comes to the handle, we're looking at black grivery on here, which is that sort of polymer style material that Benchmade has been using on a lot of their blades recently. It's super lightweight, it's pretty robust, but I can understand why people don't really like the feeling for it. It does feel plasticky, most people would probably prefer a aluminum or some kind of other metal on a handle of a knife like this, but it's been growing on me. This of course is coming in the Benchmade black line, so we do have the black line box. And then the blade on this thing has a smoke gray finish, which is what Benchmade is calling it. It is a dagger style, so it is sharpened on both sides, and there are some like really big scallop serrations towards the bottom of the blade. Blades like this are generally chisel ground, which this one is, so that is something to keep in mind if you ever go to sharpen this. And then on the back side of this, we do have a deep carry pocket clip, which is not reversible, so it is tip down carry all the time as most of these blades are. Now back to the blade, this thing has a very similar steel to the Redoubt that we looked at last week. It is a CPM D2, which is a 60 or 62 on the Rockwell hardness scale. A lot of people still have mixed opinions about D2, doesn't bother me, but we can talk about that more. And then this entire package, which is fairly large, is coming in at under 3 ounces. This thing weighs 2.97 ounces, so really lightweight, great action too. So since I finished filming that last video on the Redoubt, I threw this guy in my pocket and I've been cutting stuff with it for the past week now. And we're just talking about like everyday carry tasks, opening up a lot of boxes and letters and mail and things like that, cutting loose strings off of clothing. And this knife is great, but probably overkill for that. And that's one of the reasons why I generally don't carry OTF knives very often. They're cool, they have that awesome fidget factor. Each action is a little bit different, sometimes with the push button right here on the front face of the handle, and then other ones like the Benchmade Shootout here has them running down the back. They are very cool, I like the engineering that goes behind them because again, they're all a little bit different. And then when it comes to this particular knife here, I'm not sure if this will be a crowd favorite. There are a lot of people that like the just kind of original or the regular automatic Claymore knife, which, I think I have, but let me find it. Yeah, here it is. This is actually a mini version of the Claymore, which is an automatic knife. This guy right here is a little more my style. I don't know why, I just kind of prefer more traditional style knives like this. So this is the mini Claymore, and this is the full-size OTF Claymore, but they also make a full-size Claymore and a mini OTF Claymore. So these knives are kind of like cousins. Both grivery handles on these, both CPM D2 steel on here, which again, those two choices are definitely not people's favorites, but I have some other options here, both from Benchmade and from some other makers that you may prefer. When you're looking at a knife like this that comes in at $400, that is a large pill to swallow. That being said though, Benchmade has really good quality. I've been fidgeting with this thing for days and days now and I have not had a misfire. It does have a little bit of tape gunk and stuff on it, not much, but it hasn't bound up or slowed down at all. The action on this thing is really great and there's actually a little Easter egg on here. I never noticed this with the original Claymore because this one honestly hasn't seen much pocket time, but you'll notice right on the top here where the blade comes out, 
there are some dots and dashes, so Morse code. I was out camping the other night and I saw those on there and I was like, what does that mean? Dot, dot, dash, dot, dash, dot. Three letters, it means F, T, E. I was like, what? FTE, what does that mean? What could that mean in like knife terms? And then it hit me, FTE stands for face towards enemy and that is what you find on the front of most claymores. Not that I have experience with claymores, but what I have seen. So you have a little bit of an Easter egg on both these claymores here with the Morse code saying FTE face towards enemy. I thought that was kind of a cool touch. The grip on this thing feels great. It is very light, but it is also very large. So let's jump into some comparisons here. All right, so here's a look at all of the OTFs that I have in my collection. Nothing to write home about, but I have some cool pieces here that I've kind of collected over the years. So I really like the aesthetics of what Benchmade did with the OTF Claymore. The texturing on here feels really nice. And again, grivery handles. I understand people don't love this material. They don't love D2 as a blade steel either, especially at the price point, but that is what it is. This is just a review. So a close up look at the blade here, you will see a little bit of a trough down the center there and those massive serrations. I honestly have not really cut anything with those because I'm just cutting boxes and regular mail, things like that. And you can see looking at the back side of it, it is chisel ground, so only a bevel on this side here. It does make it pretty easy to sharpen that way, but I could see people getting creative and kind of sharpening this thing in other fashions, putting that bevel on both sides of this knife. The action does feel great. It's not quite as hard as some of these other knives over here. I'm looking at you, Microtech. So really easy to actuate. There is no lock or anything, just like you would find on the original, just regular automatic Claymore. So overall, cool knife and probably one of the biggest out of all that I have here. Now carrying this thing for a little while made me actually kind of appreciate this guy right here. This is the Benchmade Shootout and a lot of similar materials, but a little bit of a different style. This one does have a reversible pocket clip. We do have a little glass breaker on the bottom and the switch is on the spine of the knife or the spine of the handle, I should say. This is a CPM crew wear blade on here. So if D2 isn't your thing, maybe the shootout is an option to look at. I think I actually prefer the action on this just because when you pull it out of your pocket, you're right there ready to cut right back in. It's pretty dang fast. OTFs with this grivery handle on here, you can really feel the action. It kind of like clunks in. I wouldn't say it's like the best feeling thing ever, but you can tell that it's a really quality knife. This thing has also never misfired on me, no matter how fast I'm firing it. It's fun. I like it. And now out of the Benchmade OTFs that I have, one of the most comparable would probably be the Autocrat. Out of the Benchmade lineup, this is probably the one, at least that I have, which I would prefer the most. I do like having the activation switch on the spine of the knife. This one is also a dagger style blade, also chisel ground, so very similar to that there. But Benchmade is using better materials on the Autocrat. We have a S30V blade steel on here. We have G10, which gives a little bit more weight to the knife, and it's kind of like textured all around, it's nice and smooth. I could do without the blue hardware, that's just a personal thing obviously, but the Autocrat definitely feels like a more premium knife than something with those grivery handles on there. Better steel too, at least in my opinion. When it comes to blade steel, I've talked about this in the past too, I'm not a huge snob when it comes to that. These knives are very similar in size by the way. I don't mind having D2 on my blades. In the past, D2, it kinda just got the reputation of being a tool steel, which it is, but I think most people, it doesn't even really matter what your blade steel is. Most people could get away with like a regular old stainless steel. And as long as you keep it sharp and you're only cutting like regular everyday things with it, you're probably fine. I could rant about that for a while, but let's move on to some other ones here. I don't know if you guys have seen this other than on my Instagram. I don't think I've done a video on this, but does that logo there look familiar? Shout out to my buddy Zach, Zach in the Wild, and he did a collaboration with Axial Knives and came up with this guy right here. I believe this is known as the Shift 3.0. This one hasn't seen a ton of pocket time because it was kind of special. It was a gift. 
Zach and Jamie drove all the way out into the desert of Utah to find me and he wanted to gift me this blade here. So this was an exclusive done with them. And this is moving into even more premium materials. We've got a MagnaCut blade on there, really cool Tonto style tip. It kind of has like that swedge across the back and it would be very good for penetrating things. We got a pretty deep carry clip on there and I believe these are aluminum handles. The action on this thing, not quite as good as some of these other ones that we're gonna look at, but also a very nice action. This thing has never misfired on me either, but also hasn't gotten really gunked up because it did not see a ton of pocket time. So Zach, if you're watching this, thanks again for this blade. This thing will always be in my collection and Axial, another cool company to look at. I think they make some really great OTF knives, other knives as well, but they're also pretty affordable for what you're getting. Now, speaking of some of the best action knives out here, this one right here, when I first got this thing in my collection, I believe I did a video on it and it changed the way that I thought about OTF knives because aluminum handles on here, aluminum activation switch there, really cool style blade. This is an S35 VN blade, so pretty nice blade steel on that. Really cool lines again with that like extra bevel there on the Tonto point. Really nicely handcrafted. It almost looks hollow ground. Actually, now that I think about it, this whole blade might be hollow ground. It's been a while since I carried this, but this is the Guardian Tactical Recon 035. What makes this knife really cool is, of course, you have aluminum and the S35 VN steel on there, but the action. They're using a metal insert in here, so you're not just rubbing this type of aluminum up against other aluminum. There's ball bearings under here, and it makes this action very fast and very responsive. Even though my hands are a little like sweaty right now, I can still activate this thing and it is just so smooth. If you guys have not felt one of the Guardian Tactical OTFs, I would highly recommend checking these things out as well. And then we've got a little mini Guardian over here. This is the GTX 025. I believe this was also a gift from Zach because at the time he was working for Blade HQ, he knew I loved the recon, so he gave me this one as a gift. A lot of knives that I've received in my collection are gifts from different people. So a lot of the same qualities here, just a little bit of a more pocketable size. It's actually a really small OTF. Not the smallest in my collection though. We'll get to that one in a second. But again, same ball bearings on there, running up against the steel instead of aluminum. Great, great OTF knife. And now for the OTF knives that kind of started it all, we have Microtech. These really set the standard for OTF knives, and although I think there are some other companies out there who have even improved on it, you can't go wrong with something like an Ultratech. I did a video on this guy a long time ago, and you can tell there's tape gunk on there. This one, because I carried it so much, eventually had some misfirings, but since then I've cleaned it out, and as long as you keep these things free of dust, which is something you have to consider with an OTF, and as long as you keep it lubricated, just a tiny bit of lube down there, this thing fires really nice. The action is still very stiff. There's aggressive texturing on the switch, but once you get used to it, you cannot go wrong with a Microtech OTF like that. Now, if we want to get a little bit fancier right here, I have a 25th anniversary of the Ultra Tech, and this is kind of like a dagger style point on there. These were exclusives that were being sold at the one and only Blade Show in Atlanta, Georgia that I've ever attended. And I do love Microtech blades, and I figured, hey, 25th anniversary, kind of a cool little history piece there. Might as well pick one up. So this one has seen no pocket time. The action is still phenomenal. A little bit lighter than my more carried regular Ultratech. But yeah, you can't go wrong with Microtech action and that is a really sweet blade on there. And then last but not least, just for fun right here, I have a super tiny, cute little Microtech. Looks just like their big brothers over there. Look at that tiny little blade. This is the tiny UTX-70. I believe I got this one while I was at Blade Show as well. Maybe I should go back to a Blade Show sometime. I don't know. I love knives, I love collecting them, and each of them kind of tell their own story. They're just really cool. This one is more of a novelty, I think, than anything. I mean, it's about the size of my middle finger. <laughs> it is a tiny, tiny OTF, but 
Still, Microtech quality. It's just a cool little EDC blade for doing whatever you may need. Maybe I'll throw this one in my pocket just for the hell of it. So those are all of my OTFs in my collection. What am I missing? Let me know what you guys think that my OTF side of things is missing. I still do really enjoy all of these knives, mainly for the fidget factor. And when you get into something that is a little more standard of a blade like this, I would be much more inclined to carry a more regular kind of blade like this as opposed to some of the dagger options out here. But again, these are all just my opinions. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. So those are my thoughts on the new Benchmade OTF Claymore. I do like this knife, but I don't know if it checks off any like major boxes for me, or I don't think any of these OTFs really cross off any major boxes. I haven't found an OTF that I absolutely love and I would carry every single day. A lot of them I do really enjoy, but I don't know what it is about these blades. They just don't come across as something that I want to rely on. And that's coming from someone who's just using these as EDC knives. There's a ton of really good options out there. Everything that I showed you guys, they are all great OTFs, but OTFs, at least from my personal opinion, would take a backseat to just kind of a regular traditional folding knife or even a fixed blade. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little glimpse into the OTFs that I have in my collection. If you guys have any questions on any of these blades, including the new Benchmade OTF Claymore, let me know in the comments down below. I'll try to answer anything as best as possible. And if we can get this video to 500 likes again, I will find a new blade to review. Let me leave you with a peek at this box real quick. You've seen it before, but I'll show you again. This thing is packed with blades. Ugh. And then I even had to start a little overflow box here. So maybe I should get rid of some of these, but they're just fun. And it's cool to do all these comparisons with them. So let me know what you guys want to see as far as EDC blades and other everyday carry gear goes. That's all. If you're new here, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every single week. As always, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.